it is really freaking hot in here, but I have to have the door closed because otherwise it's just too noisy. Hey folks, my name is Jen, and today I would like to tell you about all of the books that I read in the month of February. So in February, I read five books, which was definitely less than I was hoping to get to, but life. But everything I read, I did pretty much really enjoy. So let's just get into the first book. So the first thing I read in February was Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. This is all about Felix, who is a transgender teen living in New York City and going to a art school um, along with his best friend Ezra. Um, during this book, they are actually taking place, um, taking part in a uh, summer program um, that the school offers for some of its students. Um, so it's him and his best friend Ezra, and then uh, some other various classmates. Uh, they are all working on their various art projects uh, to present to the school and things are going kind of okay for Felix. He isn't really entirely sure about what uh, project he is really going to do because he's very scared of failing and he but he is spending most of his summer bouncing between his best friend's apartment that his very rich parents have uh, let him stay in for the summer, um, as well as um, staying at home with his father. So things are going kind of okay for Felix up until the point where someone decides to post uh, photos of his old self, um, including those um, that feature his dead name, and begin. they also begin um, sending him transphobic messages online and he decides that he thinks he knows who it is and he is going to set a trap online to catch this person. This was overall a very good read. I, I've never really read any books that have a uh, transgender main character before, um, so this was a first for me and I honestly don't think I've read many books that have anyone who is transgender in them in general. Um, I really enjoyed the friendships that were in this book. The friendship between Felix and Ezra is just wonderful. Um, I also really enjoyed the friendships that developed between Felix and um, a couple of their classmates, namely Leah. I loved Leah and Ezra, actually. I love both of them. Um, I have to admit, I didn't always like Felix throughout the entire book um, because I found him to be more of an observant um, party in his own life. Um, he was just kind of sitting back and watching things. He wasn't really, um, participating. And on the one hand, I kind of get it as someone who is and has always been rather shy. It's very easy to slip into that role of being like the observer rather than actually taking part in things. But considering that this book was largely about Felix's life and shit that was happening in his life, it did feel at least about, for half of the book anyway, that he was just kind of very much not even like a full participant in his own story, uh, which I found to be frustrating at times. And I also uh, was a little frustrated with him um, for how he treated his father throughout a good chunk of the book. Um, his father uh, messes up sometimes and still will use his dead name on occasion, which I, I mean, I'm not transgender, so I, I can't understand the full uh, gravity of that situation, but he keeps thinking that his father is not accepting him and not loving him for the son that he is. It was just kind of like it. I understood Felix's hurt for that, but I also understood the father's half of it because he has had to be a single father to Felix since Felix's mother ran out on them um, several years before and 
I also understood that like, you know, this was your child that you've known since they, you know, were birthed and you know, it's been a couple of years and he's still getting used to who his child actually is, like who his child really is and still trying to use that. But he wasn't like, it's not like he was not fully accepting it, it was just he's still wrapping his mind around it because his father did pay for his um, surgery and his uh, testosterone and various treatments and also did pay for him, like, works really hard to shell out the money both for all of that and also to send him to a fancy art school in the city. So it's very much, it's like he is not so good with his words expressing his love, but his father is expressing his love through his actions and trying to be supportive even as he is trying to still just, I guess. So yeah, I feel like I'm not explaining this the way I want to explain it. I'm not trying to be rude. And again, I will say that I, you know, I don't understand because I am not transgender. So I, I don't fully understand how upsetting or frustrating that could be. But I do say that I I understand that his father's love language is more action than words of affirmation is what I'm trying to get across and I thought that Felix could cut him a little bit of slack I guess is what I'm saying cut him with just a teen just a little just a little bit of slack the man's working his butt off so you can be who you are and the world will see that and also so you can be an artist and go to a really nice school. That. Anyway. But I do think that this is a very good read for young people. I think it's a really good read um, to help you try to understand more about what life could potentially be like for someone who is transgender. This book is also chock full of um, a lot of LGBTQ uh, plus rep within here, which I think is also very important uh, to see more diverse reads as well. And I also think it's really important uh, to read if you are also um, a teenager uh, in high school and still don't know what the hell you're doing with your life, what you haven't fully figured it out. Are you going to college? Or are you not going to college? What college are you going to? Do you have a dream college that you're scared you're not going to get into? Do you have a backup one? Because you should always have a backup one. Like, those kind of things. And I guess that is also part of what I didn't understand about Felix's observance part sometimes because honestly it is so far removed in time for me that that worry about am I choosing the right thing with my life? What am I doing? What if I don't get into this school that I like? What if I fail? Like that kind of thing. It has been so long since I've done that so I guess that's why I can't fully understand all of that struggle anymore, but I do think that this would be a good read for someone who is in that age range and is still kind of dealing with that, um, to have someone to relate to who is also going through that kind of mental struggle. I The descriptions of New York City were interesting because I've seen either um, New York City and like crime shows or I've seen like New York City and like uh I guess make Cabot's view which kind of features some of the more eh sides of things but does it in like a humorous way and then focuses on like the really pretty things about it as well because Mia really loves living in New York City like that kind of thing but this like showed a little bit more of the gritty garbagey side of it in some place. It did also show some good parts as well, but it also had like just straight up descriptions of like garbage or gross shit in the city, which is personally something that I've experienced in the city and part of why I don't really like the city, but it's just, so that was, it was interesting to have more of a down-to-earth kind of description of New York City that's not like either 
fully gritty and there's death on every corner or um, be more fanciful like oh it's the city of lights and I have this blah 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 and Broadway and ah oh, like that kind of thing it was nice to see like a more no this is just life um, when you live here here you go <laughs> but I will say again that I really really did love the characters I liked the growth that Felix had over the book I like I said, I, I didn't particularly like all of his actions or how he was for a good chunk of the book, but as it continued and got more climactic and everything, I really started to really um, enjoy him and, and see the growth that was kind of happening over the course of the book. Um, I also really loved his art project and the descriptions of the art school and the projects that they were working on. That was pretty fascinating. Like I said, I really do love the... Um, friendship between Felix and Ezra. I thought that was pretty great. Um, I really liked that they did not mention the dead name. Like, they brought it up. Like, it was definitely mentioned here, but they didn't, like, say what Felix's dead name was. I think that was, um, a wise a choice. Um, I think that, yeah, I think that was probably a pretty, a pretty good choice never to actually um, mention what it was. Um, I did like the little nerdy bits that were sprinkled in here and there. They mentioned anime a couple of times, which I loved. Um, the plan to expose the person who he thinks is sending him the transphobic messages, I mean, it's a terrible plan. It is like the worst possible plan that you could come up with. But I also understood where Felix was coming from with this plan because honestly, at that age, that is exactly what I would have thought was a great fucking idea. So, um, as an adult looking at it with that perspective, it's like, this is going to go terribly. But kind of remembering high school, I, I understand why Felix thought it was a great idea. And that was a very interesting element to the story as well, but it wasn't the only element to the story. There's also a lot going on in here. I didn't, I mean, parts of this, I was kind of like, ugh, but for the most part, I did really enjoy this book, and I think it is a very important read, especially for young people. Um, something for you to experience. I gave this four stars. The next book I read, and I do not have a a uh, physical copy of it because um, I ended up reading an ebook of it uh, and that was The Duke and I by Joanna Quinn. This is of course the first of the Bridgerton novels. Um, I finally started watching Bridgerton. I only have like two or three episodes left. Yes, I have not finished watching it. I know I do this to myself all the time. I get really into something and then I like just get so freaked out about coming to the end of it that I just don't finish it. It's a problem. Uh, so I decided I'm going to read the first book and see how that goes. Uh, of course, I'm on my book buying ban and also the entire series has been completely and utterly sold out. Um, I have seen a place online that you can possibly purchase all eight books because it follows all eight Bridgerton siblings. Uh, however, it, uh, it's like 80, 60, 80 bucks or something for the whole collection. I'm sorry, I just cannot. I'm just, I just I'm not gonna... Even when I am over my book buying ban, I'm not spending that kind of money on it. That's like insane. Um, if you haven't been watching Bridgerton or don't know what any of this is about, this is a, it's a, in the 1800s. It's like 1810, 13, something like 18, I think it's 1813. Um, it's basically in the Regency era and it follows the Bridgertons, which is a family. Um, the father passed away when I don't know. I think he was a Viscount, if I'm doing this correctly. Yes, I think. Um, I don't know how the hierarchy in England works. A Viscount's better than a something. A Baron? No, a Baron is a, a I don't know. Anyway, um, he has passed away. His eldest son, Antony, is, uh, has taken over the family, technically, and the mother is still living and managing her children. Um, again, they have eight kids, uh, Antony, Benedict, Colin, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca? Is that her name? Shit! 
I think it's an F, it is an F name, I think it's like Francesca or something like that, I could be wrong. Um, and then uh, Gregory and Hyacinth. <laughs> so this is about, this book, The Duke and I, is about the eldest daughter, Daphne, who is now entering society, and this was like a big deal in the Regency era and stuff, like, she's now of age, she can start, um, you know, she can be out and about and wear her hair up and go to balls, and the point of it is to find a husband, like a suit, not just a husband, like a suitable husband, and she's hoping to fall in love because her parents were in love, and it's like a whole big thing. Um, she has been in society already for two seasons, and, um, so far nobody thinks that she is wife worthy. They enjoy her, she's a very nice person, she's very charming, she's very funny and witty, but no one, she doesn't have that extra oomph, you know? She's very pretty and and kind, but she doesn't have that extra little something that's pushing like a guy's to be like, mm, I want to stay with that for the rest of my life and maybe only have one mistress. Like, she's not at that level and she keeps trying to find someone, but she's also not really finding, um anyone who particularly makes her feel like she could develop feelings and it's like a whole big thing and she's kind of despairing because she you know still hasn't found someone she wants more than anything at all to have a love like her parents had and to also have uh, a family she wants a huge big family just like she grew up in enter the duke of hastings um he uh, simon he has returned from gallivanting about the world he did not have a great bringing up um, his father's a piece of shit, his mother died giving birth to him, and he, um, he's got some shit he's working out still. He is not happy to be back, his father has passed away, and he does not want fucking diddly squat to do with marriage or anything, he just wants to live his life exactly the opposite of what his father wanted, and just do his thing. The two find that the best thing they could possibly do is enter into a fake courtship with each other because Simon, someone, a duke like him, being interested in little Daphne will make her elevated in the eyes of other men, which is like stupid if you think about it, but, but basically um, this will elevate her in society and make her more desirable to men because someone like Hastings wants her. And then Hastings also gets to keep all of these uh, nosy mothers throwing their daughters at him out of his hair and he can just go about life as he wants to. They decide to do this fake courtship to get, both get kind of what they want and of course fall in love and that is a trope that I particularly enjoy. So while I will admit for a good chunk of it I did enjoy Daphne, I thought she was very witty and funny and kind of awesome. I, by the end of it, was not as fond of her. Um, something happens close to the end, which if you have read the books or I guess it's kind of in the show too. I don't know. I haven't quite gotten there yet. But um, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. But um, if you don't, I don't want to spoil it for you. But this, she does something that I really did not agree with and I don't think was a great thing to do. So don't particularly like her and honestly that part of it did ruin the the book for me just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I loved this overall. There's also a gossip monger um, who is just sending out these pamphlets and making things kind of extra spicy and interesting. Love it. Love it. Love when people are nosy. Um, <laughs> uh, sexy troubled dude. Awesome witty kind heroine perfection. Um, I liked most of the book. It was just that ending part that I was not uh, particularly fond of. Um, I did still give it four stars, but I kind of lingered on thinking whether I should drop it down to three or not. At the moment it's still four, but yeah, I don't know. The next book I read was The Essential Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Watterson. Um, this is, of course, a Calvin and Hobbes treasury. I think this might be one of the earliest ones. And I'd thought before in my TBR that I might have read this before. After reading this, I know for a fact I've never read this before because there were some details in here. Like, it's the introduction of Susie, and it's also um, the start of seeing Rosalind. And I feel like 
I don't remember details. Like, Susie and Calvin actually like each other in here. Like, they're just teasing the shit out of each other because they have crushes on each other, which is like, what? Because in the other treasuries I've read before and when I remember reading this growing up, like, they fucking hated each other. And like, but this is just because they like each other or something? I don't know. I... I don't like that in real life, like the idea of, oh, just because he's picky on you, that means he likes you. No, fuck you. That means he's a dick. I did enjoy this at the same time. You can see some of the drawings in here. Like the style looks just a little bit different than um, how it looks later on. You can see that Bill Watterson kind of uh, changed up the looks ever so slightly on people. Um, but overall, I did enjoy this. This was dated. Like, definitely there are some pieces in here that definitely date this. Like, renting a VCR. Like, even when I was a kid, we didn't rent a VCR. We had a VCR. I don't know if anyone technically was renting VCRs in the 90s. Like, was that something people did still? I mean, I think they did that in the 80s because there was, like, brand new, right? Or something like that. But by the 90s, I think a lot of people had them, right? Am I right? I don't know. I'm old, but I'm not that old, so I don't know. Um, anyway, some pieces like that, or like cigarettes being involved, or various different things that Calvin would say, like, definitely dated this overall, but it was still like a wonderful nostalgic trip uh, down memory lane. I fucking love Hobbs and I will always love Hobbs and he is the best part of this damn thing. He is the voice of reason, but also a little crazy and I fucking love him and he's just great and wonderful and I definitely enjoyed this. I gave this five stars. The next book I read was Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama. I definitely enjoyed the insight uh, that this gave into um, President Obama's past, uh, learning more about his childhood. Of course, I think most people probably knew just a little bit about his childhood, that um, his father uh, was from Africa and his mother was uh, white and from the Midwest and that they met at school and fell in love and ended up having Barack and then he, uh, his father kind of left and uh, his mother took him to, uh, married um, an Indonesian exchange student and then took Barack to Indonesia and he lived there for a little bit of his childhood and then they had his uh, sister and then he ended up moving back to the States, um, to Hawaii, uh, where his grandparents had settled, and he lived there through high school until he went away to college, and, you know, we know those parts. We know he ended up going to Harvard and, uh, being on, like, the law review, and it was, like, a big freaking deal, and then he moved to, um, Chicago and he met his wife and like that whole thing like everybody knows that and we know those parts but this really got more into depth about his childhood both in Hawaii and Indonesia and like then going away to college and after college when he actually um became more involved in organizing in communities and I didn't realize that he went to Chicago first before he even went away to Harvard and then he ended up coming back um so I hadn't known that part and it really kind of got more into and it got more into a discussion on um racial tensions and and the difference of race and kind of growing up in this kind of interesting uh life he had between dealing with being both black and white and also um, living in different areas of either the U.S. and also Indonesia for a while and like just and then visiting um, Africa eventually uh, eventually going to see his father's family in Kenya and also kind of dealing with his father who is someone who he didn't really know he kind of held him up on a pedestal because of the stories that his mother and grandparents would have about his dad and then the person he met in person was very kind of different and then going finally 
uh, the culmination of this was traveling to Kenya to actually spend time and meet his um, father's side out there and really get to know these people and try to learn more about his dad and it was just extremely powerful. I wouldn't say that it was a joy to read all of the way through because there were some very tough topics discussed in here, but I did enjoy. Like I said before, I'm a nosy bitch. I like lear learning more about people, and I, I did enjoy very much learning more about him and learning how he got to be um, the person he is. How, what you got to see, especially in um, the little bits of his childhood or in the times when he was an organizer in Chicago, you got to see more of kind of the ideas and things that he was he's passionate about that he kind of brought to the presidency as well and it was it was very interesting to see that kind of journey and to learn more about him and to also learn more about like things involving um racial segregation and stuff like that that I didn't know before like I knew some things because you're taught stuff in school but some of um, some of what was in here I'd never heard of before. So overall I thought this was a very captivating memoir, but overall I just, I really enjoyed it. He is a wonderful, like, talented, um, writer and yeah, it was just a wonderful memoir. I enjoyed it a lot. And the last book that I read in February was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This was just a great read. Um, I had a little trouble in the beginning just because this is told in um, present tense which is something that I don't particularly enjoy. Um, it's something that I honestly I've not really read that many books um, that have like present tense overall so it was very jarring. Most of the books I read are uh, past tense, you know, and that's how I write as well. I never write in present tense. I never think about writing in present tense. And like this, so it was a little jarring for the first few chapters just because I I wasn't used to it. But as the story continued, it kind of went to the back of my mind because it was so fascinated by what was going on in general. I love both Alex and Henry. Henry is a sweet little cinnamon bun and I fucking love him. I didn't even tell you what this book is about because I'm so excited about talking about it. Anyway, this is about uh, Alex who is the first son of the first? Maybe not the first. I don't know. First son of, I think it's the first, female president of the United States. And Henry is the Prince of England. He is not the crown prince. His older brother has that duty, but he is like next in line? Or his sister's next in line? No, I think it's him. Maybe it's the baby of the family. I can't remember. Anyway, basically Alex is like the America's version of a young royal. Everybody likes him. He's kind of a genius. He's very into political strategy and stuff like that. He wants to be in like Congress and everything. Um, he's very charismatic, handsome, has a mouth on him, which like I appreciate as someone who will work fuck into just about any sentence possible. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. The problem is he kind of has a beef with Prince Henry with and a certain uh, event that uh, the two of them are at, uh, something happens at it and it's like this huge scandal and everyone thinks that like, oh my god, America and England are gonna have fucking beef. So the two are thrust together to spend some time to each other and show the press that no, really, we're best friends, we've always been best friends, it's fine. In the course of this fake friendship, a real friendship kind of develops, which fairly quickly turns into a love connection. I really, really enjoyed this. I mean, we knew where it was going to go. Obviously, it's a romance story, okay? But, like, it was just, it was just wonderful. It was cute. It was nice to watch it develop. Um, again, Henry, sweet cinnamon roll, fucking adore him. Um, Alex, 
dude like sometimes he's a lot and he just needs to chill out with like his intenseness sometimes but at the same time like he's named after Alexander Hamilton there are some elements in here in him of Alexander Hamilton that I find um, lovely because I'm kind of half in love with Alexander Hamilton anyway and then we also have <laughs> mentions of um, historical like love letters between historical figures like Alex and Eliza or Alex and Lauren Sporla and like other like authors and, and people throughout history they reference it a lot it's a bit much sometimes but it's also really cute and I also kind of really like that as well because I'm a dork um, I absolutely loved this. It also tackles some big issues about um, coming out, being who you are, being in the public eye, dealing with uh, racism, and, and also the topic of um, politics. There is a character in here who is not the greatest, and I don't think he was entirely supposed to be like a Trump figure, but I think he was like Trump light. <laughs> basically um, because while this is going on it's also an election year for Alex's mother. Um, she is hoping to win a second term in office and that whole shit's going on as well. Especially since their relationship as it's growing has to be a little bit on the DL because of that election and also because um, if you're royal I don't think you can be gay. I don't know if that's true in real life. No idea. Like, I, I find the royals interesting, but I am i don't honestly know about that. Um, in this world, you can't, kind of. So it's like, a, everything's on the DL. There's also some mixed media stuff in here as well that I kind of enjoyed. Um, I didn't... There's one element of the emails where they um, sign off. And how they sign off is just like how they're talking about things. It's like, regards, harangued royal highness. And then signing off as Alex, first son of questionable late night emails. And like stuff like that. And it, on the one hand it's kind of funny, but on the other hand it is, um, it reminded me of something that Yale James would do throughout like the Fifty Shades series and I fucking hated it. I hated those books in general. And so when that kind of thing showed up in here, Mm, I didn't like it and again that might not it, it's nothing to do necessarily with that because it is a quirky thing that is kind of funny if you look at it in here but because I'm associating it with a series that I fucking loathe I didn't like that otherwise though enjoyed the relationships enjoyed their friends enjoyed um, their families for the most part, for the most part, Alex's dad's a fucking hoot. Like, I, I loved, you know, that. I really loved their, their close families as well. Alex's, um, sister and, uh, one of his best friends. Wonderful. Hilarious. Um, Henry's best friend, Pez. Fucking wonderful. Hilarious. Loved him. Um, however, hilarious, adorable, steamy as fuck. Enjoyed this a hell of a lot. It also made me laugh out loud multiple times. I may have screamed a couple of times while reading this out of excitement and also because something was so fucking funny. I just, I couldn't. So yeah, overall really enjoyed. I gave this four stars. And that was it folks. I only read the five books last month. Um, as you know, I have a lot more going on this month. So I'm hoping to read more overall. Oh, one thing I will mention. So these two also, um, I took part in uh, book discussions for both of these um, in February. This was like kind of mid-February and this was the end of February. And these two were hosted by Charlotte at Book Rex by Char. Uh, both of these discussions were a lot of fun. I really enjoyed connecting with people about these and kind of talking about what we what we liked or, or weren't particularly fond of and what, what things we found particularly scream worthy or whatever. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do that. Um, 
I'll probably link her down below. Yeah, I'll link her down below so you can see. Um, but yeah, this was a that was a lot of fun. I actually think that would be a lot of fun to take part in again sometime. So I'll keep my eyes out if anyone else is deciding to do that kind of thing or whatever. Socializing. I'm trying. I'm trying more. We'll see. So that was great. And I'm very glad that I decided to take part in this because I read two really great books and this is like, this one is going to be like an all-time favorite. It's fucking hilarious. Anyway, um, I hope that you all are having a wonderful month. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.